What's going on guys? Matt here from Airsoft Junkies. Just wanted to help you guys out with some of the questions that we've been getting on our YouTube and just phone calls period. Just wanted to help you guys out with some of the questions that you guys have been asking. And one of the main questions that we've been getting is how do you actually install a cylinder such as F1, Jack, uh, Wolverine, the N7, um, the Protec. Everybody's been asking us these questions and today we are actually going to show you guys how to do that. Um, also with this build we're going to go ahead and do a grip connect. We're also going to drop in a speed trigger. Um, and a lot of the things that we're going to do, we're going to show you step by step everything that we do here at Airsoft Junkies to make sure that your builds go out properly. Um, so go ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Alright guys, so to start, of course, you got to make sure that you have all the right tools that you need. Um, of course, a screwdriver, Phillips head. Um, sometimes a flat head will work just depending on which actual body you're working with. A uh, hammer. Always going to need a hammer. Got to get this set pin out. Um, a punch is always good as well. Smaller Phillips head screwdriver. Allen key for the actual plate on the bottom of the grip. And I have a file here um, with some of the different engines that you actually drop in, the cylinder kits. Um, the actual trigger itself the little micro switch on the back sometimes gets caught. Um, I know a lot of the times on the G and G bodies, um, it definitely happens. So people break the actual micro switch on the on the back of the trigger board that actually controls the semi and the auto. Um, so what we do with the file, um, we actually file down the back side of it, which I will actually show you. Um, you take off a little bit on the back side of it and um, you shouldn't have that problem with your actual uh, micro switch breaking. So those are some of the tools that you'll need. So what we'll go ahead and do, we'll go ahead and break this down and we'll get the gearbox out of it. All right, now we're dropping the, we've taken off the stock, um, the actual grip, of course the upper and everything. And now we're taking out the um, mag release. We're gonna get the pin or the center pin and then we're gonna get the back pin. All right, guys, now I got the gearbox out. A um, uh, good thing to check out for, make sure you keep your um, parts, you know, within a reasonable area to where they're not all over the place. You want to make sure you don't lose anything because putting it back together in the end can be kind of difficult if you're missing parts. So definitely keep them in a nice area. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to actually disassemble the actual gearbox itself. Um, what we're going to do is just going to take out these screws. Uh, depending on which type of uh, gearbox you're working with, um, these are either going to be Allen keys or they're going to be um, actual Phillips head. Um, I have to stress this. Be careful when you're taking a gearbox apart because these are under pressure. So when you're taking this apart, make sure you watch this back spring or when you're opening it up, make sure you watch out for the spring um, it will shoot out fast. It will come out extremely fast. It will break a window very, very easily. So make sure you watch yourself when you do that. So let me grab my Phillips head screwdriver. We'll go ahead and start breaking this down. All right, guys. So got everything unscrewed. Again, make sure you got a little area for all your screws. Oops. See? Stuff like that. That happens all the time. Uh, drop screws every once in a while but gotta make sure you find them all right so like I said you gotta make sure you watch out for that back spring um, the easiest way that I do this is I'll take my screwdriver I'll pry open from the bottom of the actual gearbox and if you look down in here you actually see that guide and then the spring is right in there all you have to do is just Pry it down, grab it, and your spring comes right out. Now, since we're doing an F1, we need to make sure that we keep this. Um, like the Wolverines, uh, the Infernos, or the N7s, they actually come 
with a different one which is actually smaller since their units are a little bit bigger these will not work with them so they'll actually run into the actual um, unit itself so um, with the F1 or the jack they are small enough to where we actually could use this so we'll go ahead and put this to the side with our parts that we have go ahead and break down everything in the gearbox um, up to you completely if you want to keep the gears and all that stuff I don't know um, most people once they go HPA they never kind of look back so um, what I'll do is I'll just take this stuff out we'll just set it to the side for right now all right all right guys so making sure we got all the grease and everything out of it um, like I said it just it helps to of course keep everything clean inside but you want to make sure you get all those uh, shims out to where you don't hear them clacking around all right so as you can see here we've got the old actual micro switch or trigger box um, from the gearbox right here with the trigger still in it um, since we're going to do a speed trigger on this one we'll go ahead and pull this trigger out this trigger you can keep it for a spare if you need it for another gun or decide to go back to a standard one so I'm just gonna put this over to the side this right here is where a smaller screwdriver is gonna come in hand you've got two screws and this is for most gearboxes um, you've got two screws here you've got your actual your actual safe mechanism and then you've got your actual trigger All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take these two screws out. Um, I highly recommend keeping uh, their exact same screw. You need one for the actual trigger board when you, when you actually replace it. So let me go ahead and pull this out. Set that over to the side. Take that one, set it over to the side as well. We're going to take all these wires and again you can keep them for spare parts if you decide to put it back together um, but we will set that over to the side and our cutoff lever put that over to the side we're just going to go ahead and get that little extra grease that got left behind Alright guys, like I said before, on most of the drop-in kits, uh, when it comes to their actual trigger boards itself, um, you need to make sure that you're watching your, your plate on your, um, your selector plate on your gearbox. Um, like I said, with the G&Gs, it mostly happens with the G&Gs, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this one out. I've already got it pre out here, so go ahead and grab that out. I'm going to take this. You need to shave the back side where the actual um, plate touches the trigger um, you need to shave it or the trigger board uh, micro switch you need to shave it at a 45 degree angle um, also um, again this just depends on which gearbox you're using um, and what plate you actually have in there with this one I'm also going to shave off just a little bit on the back side of it before I do my 45 degree angle on it. Um, that's just to make sure that we don't have the problem that I see sometimes is where you'll be in semi and it doesn't switch all the way, you know, or you'll be in semi and it's shooting full auto. Um, that's just because, again, that micro switch is just a little hair too close to the actual plate itself um, when you go into semi. All right, so I've got my shave down. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just install this back into the gearbox. And then we're going to start putting our trigger board and everything in. I'll show you guys how to assemble that as well. We're ready for the install now. I've got my Polestar F1 here. This is what you get inside. Wire harness. 
Got your actual F1 cylinder. You've got the FCU and the trigger board, and of course, your instructions on how to set everything up after it's already in. All right, guys, a good thing before you even start putting everything together, let's make sure your actual cylinder itself does not have any issues. Um, I've seen some times where you get them, you hook them up, you put everything together, and then you put air to it, and then it starts to leak. Um, the first thing that we like to do here is we like to make sure that we don't have any of those issues. We want to make sure that everything's greased properly. Um, we want to make sure everything is together before we put everything inside the gearbox. So what we're going to do, we've got to connect here. I'm going to go ahead and hook some air up to it. And we're going to make sure that we don't have any leaks. All right. So... Let's get some air to it. Um, now what you're looking for when you're, when you're actually hooking up the air, you want to listen for any leak uh, or leakage around the solenoid area, around the actual uh, piece where the two connectors meet. You want to make sure that that O-ring is seated correctly. You also have an O-ring that's in, um, in the area where the nozzle is. The nozzle itself has an O-ring, so you want to make sure that you're not getting any leak from any of these areas in the actual engine itself. Alright guys, so now that we've got the F1 all checked out, we'll set that down to the side. We're going to go to our trigger board. Now, the best thing to start with whenever you do any engine is, of course, check your board out. Let's make sure that the board doesn't have any problems whatsoever. Uh, the micro switch that I was talking to you about, sometimes we get them in and we have problems with that. It's very rare that it happens, but you never know. You want to make sure and inspect it to make sure that we don't have any issues with it. So again, this one looks good. So um, what we will go ahead and start with, let's get our wire harness. Uh, and this is mostly on any of the Polestar. Um, the jack or the F1, um, it's best to go ahead and install the wiring harness and also the connector tip for the solenoid. Um, go ahead and pre-attach it because when you put it down in the gearbox, some of the gearboxes have notches on it to where you can't just plug it in once the trigger board is already in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wire this up. first wire and harness. Now, most triggers, um, which I will actually show you once we get everything put together, you want to make sure that your wire and harness is not going to be in the way of your actual trigger itself. Now that sometimes can be an issue. Um, you just want to make sure that you check that out before you put everything down in. So I went ahead and slid this little cover a little bit further up so I can actually bend those wires a little bit so we don't get that problem. We're going to go ahead and grab our engine itself and coil it a little bit. We're going to plug that last one in. Alright, so you can do this either with it on the engine or off the engine. Um, it's completely up to you. I just prefer to do it on it so that I can just drop everything in all at once. Alright, we're going to go ahead and drop this in. Um, you want to make sure, of course, your selector plate is not going to give you any problems once you drop this down in because if you force it in, you have a possibility of breaking that little micro switch on the back. So I'm going to make sure that we don't have any issues with it. And I'm going to push it forward. We should be good. Alright. So I got everything lined up. Now, we just go ahead and drop our screw in. Alright. Don't over-tighten. 
Um, the these are made out of aluminum, so you have a really high chance of stripping it if you over torque it. Um, it is possible of doing it, so definitely be careful when you're doing that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to coil that up just a little bit. That's just to make sure that we don't have this wire just going all over the place because we have to get the set pin back through it, and then we have to put the back pin back through it. So we want to make sure that wire is out of the way so we don't hit that with anything. So, all right. We've got everything nice. The F1 and the jack and most of the other um, engines out there they actually have these grooves in it so once you set everything down in it it should sit right in the groove spots in the actual gearbox itself so let's go ahead move that wire up now like I said we're gonna install a speed trigger I know a few people have asked us how to install those as well I've got a straight silver here. Um, find this on our website, uh, just like any of the other stuff here. You can find it on our website. We'll go ahead, open this up. All right. Be very, very careful when you're taking these speed triggers out of their bags by himself because this little spring loves to disappear. It loves to get out of your hands and uh, roll off the table and stuff like that. Got to make sure you keep an eye on that. Um, this one I'm going to go ahead and set this trigger up. Let's make sure that um, everything is perfect with it before we put it in. Um, we're going to go ahead and adjust this screw so we don't have anything falling out on us. Um, also, it really helps with holding the actual spring once you try to put everything together. So, kind of roll it up in the back of it. Let's make sure everything's good for that spring. Sits on there perfect. Nothing, it won't fall off or anything. So, let's go ahead and drop this in. So definitely be careful. Um, sometimes it likes to pop out, sometimes it doesn't. With this one, we are good. Um, and we will definitely check that out once we have everything together. You want to make sure um, that your your speed trigger. Sometimes they are a little bit bigger on the diameter of their actual um, set pieces. Um, you want to make sure that once it sits down in your gearbox, that those set pieces aren't oversized. Um, sometimes I've seen it to where you have to drill out the holes itself to make sure that they fit down in there um, just right. This one seems to, to be fine, um, but again, we're going to double check that. We're going to make sure that everything's good. All right, so like I said, you want to make sure that you save um, this guide. Um, it's definitely going to help you when you put everything back together. Um, because you're going to need this for the actual screw holes. So once you put the gun back together, your actual um, stock itself will go back on or your buffer tube will go back on. You want to make sure that you have this here. So I went ahead and took the screw out of the actual uh, buffer tube itself. Um, grabbed it. This is just an easy you know, tip that I, I use every once in a while here for putting this back together. So I'll just go ahead and put that in the back. Drop it right down in there. So when you put everything together, you have something to hold that, to center it. I know sometimes that can be a pain once you're putting it back together. So we'll go ahead and drop the cover on this. All right, so we've got everything lined up. Like I said, you want to make sure that you check the trigger before you bolt everything up because sometimes you got to make adjustments on that. Um, just make sure. I went ahead and checked this one out. We are good. Um, my back pin, it's set, everything's in its groove. I'm not pinching any of the wires. 
and our hose is coming out the bottom just fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead, flip this over. We're going to go ahead and bolt this all up. All right, guys, I got everything bolted up. But again, like I always do here, once I build a gun, I want to go ahead and check it to make sure that we don't have any problems whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the air back up to it. We're going to make sure we don't have any leaks again, and we're going to go ahead and test fire. We're going to make sure that everything's firing correctly. All right, guys, so this is actually Polar Star's third revision on their FCU. Um, so the first thing that you want to check, um, sometimes they come in F1, sometimes they come in FE, or so that's fusion engine or that's actual F1. Um, so anything with a single solenoid. Um, you want to make sure. Right now, let me see what I have it in. I have it in FE mode. So let's pull out of the program. It will fire, but the actual solenoid itself will not fire. So if you have that problem, make sure you go to your FCU and check that out. Make sure that you're on the, on right, the right setting um, when you're actually testing it before you drop everything in. So I'm on F1 now. We'll go ahead and fire. Oops, get out of that setting. Let's do semi. All right, and it's firing fine. Everything sounds good, so we're good to go. We'll go ahead and check it for leaks, make sure everything is good, and we will drop it back in the gun. All right, guys, I can't stress it enough. You want to make sure that everything is perfect once you put this in. So make sure that it's not leaking. Make sure that it's firing properly. Make sure everything is good before you start putting this back into your gun. So we're going to go ahead and do a couple more test fires on it. And the safety works, so we are good. So we're going to go ahead and do the reverse of everything before. We're going to put everything back together, and then we're going to test it one more final time. Want to make sure, of course, your selector switch works. We got safe, semi, and we got bull. So everything's working properly on that end. Let's go ahead and hook the air up. And I don't hear any leaks, so we are good to go to go ahead and wrap this up. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and add a grip connect to it. Um, we've got two different ones on the website that you can get. We've got the red line, and then we got the Vulcan. This one right here, we're going to go ahead and install the Vulcan. Um, these I really do like because these drop right in in the replacement of what the G&Gs have. So it's very easy. You just got to make sure when you're cutting these, these uh, macro lines, you have to make sure that you don't cut it too short or you're going to have a really big issue. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and take the actual um, piece itself. I like to measure out how far it needs to go down in and how much I need to make sure I don't cut anything lower. Um, so, went ahead, you gotta make sure you feel that, that little pinch through and you gotta make sure that it's seating correctly. So what I'm gonna do now, um, you can use a razor blade, scissors, whatever you know is sharp that you can actually get through through this with. I like to go ahead and I'll cut that piece off and I'm going to do that same step and I'm going to do it all over again. Alright, here we go. We're going to go ahead and try it one more time just to make sure we're getting the right. Alright, so of course we're going to need to cut some more off. So once you get to a point where you're getting closer to the actual grip itself, I would do your cuts at v smaller increments just to make sure that you don't cut it too short. Um, just go ahead and pull that off. Go ahead and cut probably right about there. All right. Go ahead and check again. All right. Just 
a little bit more. Alright, and you want to make sure that this is as flush as possible because it pretty much locks itself in and it sits flush with the back end of this actual um, piece. So make sure we feel everything. Alright, here we go. And uh, at this point, you don't really want to cut off too too much more. Um, these hoses do flex, so what I would do is I would just kind of give it a little push. If you feel like you're pushing too much up, go ahead and cut off just a little bit more. Um, just don't cut too much off, or you will definitely have to replace that line. Um, once you have to replace that line, you will run into issues such as that actual line leaking up near where the actual engine is. So definitely make sure you watch how much you're cutting. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and put in one of the screws and then we're going to go ahead and test it. Alright, so guys, you want to make sure, like I said, you want to make sure you're not cutting your lines too short. We'll go ahead, test, 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 test. I cannot stress it. So we'll go ahead and... Hook that up, check for any leaks. I don't hear anything on this. So what we will do now is we'll go ahead and put our, our screws in, we'll bolt everything down. We're gonna put the upper receiver on it and make sure once you start putting everything to, together, you got to make sure your alignment is on um, on correctly with your actual nozzle itself and your hop up. Um, I've noticed um, with some builds and I've noticed people asking me questions about um, them having scrapes and you know wear and tear on their actual nozzle itself. Um, you got to make sure that you check your alignment once you put everything together. Um, you'll get your actual wear on your nozzle just because the alignment is slightly off. All the alignment, um, it can entail from the, the, the screws on the grip being too tight or the screw on the back where the buffer tube goes in, that could be too tight. It's little variants like that that could throw your alignment off. You wanna make sure that all that is set up perfectly so you don't get any of that wear on your nozzle. All right, guys, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put everything together. We're going to test fire it. Can't stress it enough again. Test, test, test. Um, we're going to make sure everything is firing. We got no leaks. We're going to make sure everything is bolted together correctly. And we're going to make sure that this gun is solid before we get it out to you. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a chrono test. We're going to run through at least two mags to make sure that we have no issues whatsoever. So we're going to do a mag on nothing but semi, and we're going to do a mag on nothing but full auto. So we're going to make sure that this gun is sound and in check before we ship it out to you. We do this on every single one of our builds. Um, some things that we have noticed uh, over the years is when these guns ship out, unfortunately, guys, we, we, it's out of our hands once it ships out. Um, FedEx, UPS, you know, different carriers, um, they throw these boxes around, unfortunately. Sometimes stuff gets unjarred. Sometimes stuff gets beat around a little bit. Unfortunately, that's something that we cannot control. But we will definitely try to help you guys out at anything possible. So if you have any problems whatsoever after you get a build from us, please do not hesitate to give us a call. We will help you guys out. But go ahead and get back to the build real quick. We'll go ahead and put everything together. Again, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and test fire it as well. All right, at this point, um, a, a thing that you're looking for, if you have any problems actually putting the upper and lower receiver together, if you have any issues like that um, to where you can't get this pin in, 
you might have a slight alignment issue. So that's something that you definitely want to look out for once you're putting the body together. Um, I have noticed on some of the VFC bodies, um, your alignment can be perfect. It's just the way that the bodies are made sometimes where they don't always align perfectly, but a quick tap, everything goes right together. So let's go ahead and close that up. Went in perfectly fine, so we should not have any alignment issues, but it is something that we are gonna check um, once we do our test firing. Um, again, we're going through two mags, so we're definitely gonna be able to tell if there's any wear or any play on anything in this gun. So let's go ahead and get our test fires in with everything together. Hook the air up. Ah, loud, the way that some of you guys like it. Uh, everything sounds good to me. Again, we're gonna go outside, we're gonna test it, we're gonna put some rain, some rounds out of it, um, put some rounds down range, and we're gonna make sure that this gun is sound before we ship it out. See you guys there with the chrono. How's it going guys, Aaron here. Now that we've done the install on the gun, we're going to test it, we're gonna put two mags through it, one through, one in full automatic, one in semi. We're gonna do some downrange testing and chrono, and then we're gonna do a checklist once we get back inside. As you can see, it shoots very consistently. Those are with 0.3 gram BBs, so we're measuring in joules. Um, we're gonna go inside, write down the average of the FPS, and go from there. All right, so once we, have, once we do all that, we're gonna get here. Um, we go through the invoice and make sure everything is in the box that's supposed to be going out. The, all the moving parts on the guns and everything is tested. Battery test, fire selector test, make sure it switches to semi, full auto, and of course the chronograph, which we just did. So we just did all of those. And it was shooting around 260 FPS with a 0.3 gram BB at 80 PSI. And of course, I checked it, so Aaron, there we go. That goes for every gun that we do. And if you guys have any questions or anything, leave a comment, give us a call. So this, we do this for every single gun, just to make sure it goes out with is, you know, everything working properly. And so that we have validation that we did our job. So like I said, have any issues, questions, give us a call.